Um, so what I would love for the community to know um, is that there are services available right here in our community at the YWCA and that um, if you see something, you should definitely say something. So there's kind of there's kind of a, a couple of things that I would like our community to know. One, if you see something, then you should definitely say something. So if you hear someone that's in crisis, as a community, we can't be afraid to call emergency response when emergency response needs to be called. Now, if we have someone that we love and care about um, and they, you know, are, we're having maybe coffee or dinner or something like that with them, there are ways that we can start to approach that conversation by um, starting starting the conversation with things like, I've noticed some changes um, with you lately and I'm a little concerned about them or um, there have been some things that I've noticed that are I'm worried about, Have can we talk about that? Or have you ever considered talking to an advocate or could I give you the number to, um, to the YW or to a crisis line so that if you ever wanted to talk to someone, you would have the number available. And then for anyone that's in an abusive uh, relationship, there are services available um, at the YWCA. We've stayed open throughout the pandemic. So we are still open. There's always someone there in our building and on our crisis line um, ready to respond. How can domestic violence situations be avoided? So what are the things to watch ahead of time before the relationship maybe gets um, to the point where it is domestic violence? So, you know, the red flags that you really, when we think about um, an abusive relationship, the red flags are the things that are leading towards decreasing autonomy and increasing power and control dynamics. There is in the model, um, it's considered like the Duluth model, there is at the center of the abusive relationship, power and control. And the person that is that is abusing the other person, what they are seeking is power and control over that person. Um, and there are different tactics then that an abusive person is using to gain power and control. So that can be minimizing, denying, blaming, isolating, financial abuse, using children, um, oftentimes seeming to be um, very very charming, very caring, um, the ideal, quote unquote, ideal partner. Um, but as the relationship begins to progress, we can see sometimes that things will progress very quickly. They don't want, that person doesn't want um, them to have any other friends. They want no one else in their life except them. Um, and so they begin to use these different, um, if they consider it a wheel, these different spokes on the wheel to start to gain more and more power and control over the person they're abusing. And then what holds it all together, um, it can be one of the spokes, but what can really hold it all together is the use of violence or the threat of um, violence. And that can be um, physical or sexual violence. When we talk about what happened on Friday night, um, there are there we don't really know about what happened. But you know, have you seen situations like this in the past? And would have been usually would have been the reasons for, behind something like this for happening. So we know um, one that the Ohio Domestic Violence Networks put out a report every year of domestic violence fatalities. So this is something that our state and our domestic violence network. Um, does track and they put out year by year um, the a report around domestic violence fatality. So it is something that we know that happens in our communities and can be accessed if you were, you know, to check out ODVN resources and it's something that um, or your local YW were a part of ODVN. Um, and year over year numbers, I, I'm sorry, I don't I don't have off the top of my head today, um, but it is something that we, you know, are a member of and do look at. Um, in terms of things that can be a very dangerous time for survivors and um, it, that we're really, um, we really, really consider and do a lot of safety planning about when we work with survivors is um, when someone is planning or preparing to take their power back. Um, and often we most frequently think of that as when they're leaving, but we know that leaving is a process. 
too often we think of leaving as an event, right? That walking out the door, um, leaving the relationship, the breakup, but leaving is really a process. So it can be starting to, you know, do different things to take back that own, their own power and control, their own independence, their own autonomy. Um, and if we know at the center of the abusive relationship is the abusive person wanting to keep power and control um, and using abuse to have it, then someone, that survivor taking it back um, can really um, be something that um, in response, that abusive person may escalate their, their um, abusive tactics, including lethality. Unfortunately, it's so devastating to see, but we do see it. When people want to help um, people that are being abused, they normally think of themselves as nosy or being inv too much involved in other people's business. So for those people that may think that, what is your message to them and what can be their first line of action in the case they find out or are know about somebody who's being abused? Yeah, so I would um, love to see that myth dispelled in our community because it really takes a village um, for us, we have to, connectivity is part of human nature. We are human beings. We require community. We require connectivity. So um, we need each other. We need um, our village, our community. Uh, so it's, it's important that we are um, here for each other, especially um, just always, but in the midst of everything that we have faced in the past year and then moving into 2020, uh, I would just love, would love to see that myth dispelled. Uh, in regards to what someone can do, you can get information about what's a, a crisis, what is the crisis number, and I can um, give that to you as well too, but the crisis number to the YWCA, again, you can start those conversations if you have someone that you care about. You can begin to say things like, you know, I, I noticed that you, your style has, maybe if their style is, has changed because one of the tactics is maybe the, that abuser is um, controlling their dress. I noticed that you dress really differently and it seems like your style has really changed. Um, I, could we, you know, would you be willing to talk about that a little bit more? It seems really different now that you're in with this relationship or, you know, um, I've noticed that you've been canceling plans a lot or I'm really concerned about um, our friendship and how we used to be able to spend so much time together and we're not able to do that anymore. Um, could we could we talk about that or would you be willing to talk to someone? Here's a number in case you ever did want to talk to someone about what's happening in your relationship. Um, so those are things that could be conversation starters that say, I'm someone who's willing to listen. And that is because isolation is such a big tactic on that power and control wheel. Listening and breaking down the isolation um, is huge. What other things should people know about domestic violence or what other misconceptions are there about domestic violence situations? Well, there are, um, one of the big misconceptions is that uh, it only affects certain communities, um, that only disenfranchised, impoverished communities are affected by dis domestic violence. It's absolutely not true. It cuts across um, socioeconomics and geography and gender. Um, although um, we know that it can cut across gender, although there's the disproportionality there where we know that women are significantly more, more impacted. Um, there is also a myth that children are not impacted by domestic violence. And um, we know that that's absolutely not true. And um, that's part of our collective grief on what we're seeing from uh, the loss of such innocent lives um, from Friday's, from Friday's in incident. And um, children are absolutely affected by when domestic violence is happening in a home, regardless of age as well, too. Some folks believe there's a myth that, you know, when kids are little, they might not remember, including, you know, if they're babies, they might not remember. Um, but because those brain connections are happening, there's so much brain development happening, it can really impact uh, the development of a child as well, too. Um, and the, the last myth that I would just um, address would be, 
that once someone is in a abusive relationship, they will repeat that cycle and they will always end up in abusive relationships. And actually someone that seeks um, intervention services and seeks domestic violence services um, and seeks out that support is the least likely to repeat that cycle of ending up in another abusive relationship. 